Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you this new week. Praise God. Now listen, God has great plans for you. And you know what? He is working out the details and manifesting that great plan in your life. Are you ready for us to call in our daily bread? Now listen, you know, when we when we do this because i want you to understand what we're doing you if if you look back you would notice that for some reason god has increased your capacity even in the area of meeting your needs the stress you used to go through in getting things done have reduced now i know that because of the kind of testimonies i've been receiving there, are, there seem to be an open door. You see, many times when we pray for things, we are waiting for the physical things to change. Meanwhile, what truly has to change first is you. So when we pray like this, when we make demands like this, you put your mind to it. You put your heart to it. Because every time we make those declarations, what's going on? A change is taking place inside of you. And because you are changing, your capacity is increasing, eventually the physical things will begin to come. For example, you, you should, if you've been praying with us faithfully and, and, and making these demands and declaring these words, you would have noticed by now that the, your stress level has reduced drastically. And God will now begin to open opportunities for you. Suddenly, your wisdom will become a lot. You know, you will just begin to understand. Like, look, you know, revelation will begin to come to you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, with this understanding, are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand today for my daily bread. I receive it right now in the name of Jesus. It is coming to me now. Angels, go, bring forth my daily bread as the Father has commanded in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. A miracle is happening today. Now, this week, this week, you are going to experience God's great miracles in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's go into today's broadcast. Father, we just bless your name today. Thank you for all the burdens you are lifting and yokes that are being destroyed right now in the life of these ones listening to you. Thank you for your grace being made manifest. And I declare now that your life has been redeemed from destruction. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we've been talking about contending earnestly for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And that's from Jude. Let's turn your Bibles with me to Jude. Verse 3. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. I told you last week, lots of things are changing. Lots of things are changing. And if you don't understand what we are doing, you won't even understand where we are. 
I was sharing with you last week, Friday, from Ephesians chapter 4. And I was trying to get you to understand the mind of God concerning the church. What is the purpose of the church? See, because many people don't know. And I've been in this church for 20 years. We were the foundation members of this church. Okay. What about how far have you gone in God's project? Now, let me read that scripture again to you. Ephesians 4, from Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What's the purpose? They want for the perfecting of the saints. First of all, the gospel has been given to the saints. And then God went a step further by, by bringing all these ministry gifts in the church. And he said the reason is for the perfecting of the saints. Meaning God's intention is that the saints be perfect. His intention is... He, he didn't just put it in his mind. He walked towards it. Now, meaning the response he is supposed to be getting from us, the saints, is our perfection. So I'm not going to join someone who will say we can never be perfect. It's impossible to be perfect. Hey, you are making God a liar because God says, I want you perfect. And then I put all these apostles, prophets, all these ministry gifts available for your perfecting praise god hallelujah now he says for the perfecting of the saints and listen the moment the saints begin to be perfect like now let me explain what that means and he say wait until you are perfect before this no the moment is you you begin to experience a change in your life see that means you're getting your you're walking towards perfection now he says for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. I explained that to you on Friday. What is the work of the ministry? Jesus has given us an assignment. He said, go ye there into all the worlds and make disciple of me. Preach the gospel everywhere. Now, when he says preach the gospel, and then he says, I told you God, Jesus gave us two, twofold calling, twofold assignments. One, in Mark chapter 16, he says, Go into all the world and he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then he said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he that doesn't believe shall be damned. And then he went on to say, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils, they will speak in new tongues, and, and all that. Now he says, In this case, he says, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Now, that's in the book of Mark. Now, let me show you what Jesus said in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 28. Watch this now. Jesus saying here, thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 19, Matthew 28 and verse 19. It says, go ye therefore and teach who? All nations. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And then he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, now this one, Jesus made no mention of if they believe or not. He didn't. But then he said something very important. He says, go and teach. And I told you on Friday, you teach by showing how, not just by talking. And he said, actually, the teaching he sent us to do is to live a life that will inspire every other person. Now, that's the work of the ministry. 
So you see, as, as born again children of God, we preach the gospel like he said in Mark. And then anyone who believes and is baptized, what baptism is he talking about? It's baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because you do the preaching. <clears throat> they do the believing. He does the baptizing. See? So he's not talking about water baptism there. No, he wasn't talking about water baptism. Even here, you know, you know, people get this thing wrong here. And, and you see, he said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Ghost. So he said, okay, so when you want to baptize you in water, they immerse you and say, in the name of the Father, and then bring you out in the name of the Son, and then bring you in the name of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus was saying. And that's not what Jesus was saying here. Take away water from your mind and just take the normal word baptism. What is baptism? It means to immerse, right? It means to dip inside. It means to dip into. So when he said, so, so remove water from your mind. When you hear baptism, all you can think about is water. There, there's such a thing as um, uh, baps, baptism of suffering. Jesus made reference to that when, when John's mom came to him and said, look, I want my children to sit on your right hand and on your left hand. And, and Jesus said, hey, are you sure they can drink of the cup? And then are you sure they can receive the baptism that I'm about to receive? And he wasn't talking about water baptism. He was talking about the baptism of affliction, the baptism of suffering. So you can be so immersed in suffering that you don't even know where to turn. Everywhere you turn, nothing, no, no green light anywhere for you. Praise God. That's all who's immersed in suffering. So you can, you can actually say someone is immersed in poverty. Someone is, is immersed in, is baptized with poverty. So when you hear the word baptism, it's important you find out what baptism, what are we baptizing, what are we being immersed into. So yeah, Jesus said, immerse them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So what was Jesus talking about? He was saying, uh, uh, he was saying, get them to understand what the Father's mind is. And get them to understand what the Son Jesus have done for them. And get them to know today what the Holy Spirit is doing in us. You see, I found out being a student of the Spirit of God for many years. I found out that. This is a big challenge for many people. And, and that's why you keep having issues in, in scriptural doctrine or interpretation. You see? And that, that's because people don't understand this message or this assignment that Jesus gave. Why would Jesus say, baptize them in the name of the Father, baptize them in the name of the Son, and baptize them in the Holy Spirit? Why would Jesus say that? And then I said he wasn't... <clears throat> He wasn't referring to water baptism. He was simply referring to teach them about the Father. In other words, let them know what the Father's mind is or what the Father has done. And let them know what Jesus has done. For example, I, I recently, you know, I, was, I, was, I think it was during the prayer meeting, the lunch hour prayer meeting, I was sharing something that Isaiah gave a prophecy. I just want to give you an example. Isaiah gave a prophecy in Isaiah 53, who shall believe our report? You know, he went on and then he began to talk about he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Now Isaiah received that prophecy from the Lord and he spoke as he was led by the Spirit of God. But he was speaking the mind of God. And many years later, Jesus came and fulfilled what Isaiah said. Meaning, it was in the heart of the Father already before Jesus came. So it wasn't Jesus that initiated his death. The Father had it in his mind. And Jesus came and fulfilled everything Isaiah spoke about. So Jesus came to show that Isaiah was right, even though he prophesied many years before them. 
And then today, because in the Isaiah's prophecy, there is the he and there is the ah, O-U-R. See, there is the he, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So Jesus is the he. And we on this other side, we are the R. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Our time is up already. Praise God. This thing, I'm going to continue because I don't want to rush this. You need to understand this. Praise God. We'll, we'll continue tomorrow. Have a blessed day ever. God bless you.